my goodness, thank you so much Rabbi Wilhelm. I can't believe it. Here I was stuck in the snow and I called Haverim and, and uh, you okay. appear. Uh, I'm, I don't work for Haverim. I don't have the, <laughs> the schmutzer bag and all that. I, I wouldn't know what a Phillips screwdri screwdriver looks like. Oh wow, I thought they were much more useful. Nah. So what are you going to do with you now? <laughs> <laughs> Fine, say it to Maybe you can help me with that. Okay, listen to me. Uh, Betzalel. Uh, yeah. Ben uh, Sir. <laughs> Um, you know that this is. I think it's today is Zion Oder, and I think this is our first real snow that we had, right? This is the first real snow that yeah, we had. Yeah, <coughs> yeah. I was my told, car will attest to that. Okay, I was told that the, the, even the Lubavitcher Hasidim, in, even Lubavitcher Hasidim in Russia, they said that Rev. Volf Greenglass used to do when the first snow fell, they would take some snow and wipe it over the forehead, and they would say, I think, uh, uh, what we say in Dublin. Shalik Hanesha Shalik and Summer, and it's a school of it not to forget. It's a school to have a good memory. Now, by the way, you should take a bucket of your snow over there, you know? Not to forget. I'll try not to forget. Okay, anyways. <laughs> so sometimes I get people calling me and tell me answers for questions that we had, and <laughs> somebody at Chaim told me about a question. I didn't even know what he was talking about. He was responding to an answer, a question a couple of weeks ago. So I got to be on top of my game. So I'm going to, today I have a couple of good questions on the Parsha. On the parsha, first of all, the parsha in general, as a Lubavitch and Chassid, gives every every Lubavitcher a kitzel. You know what a kitzel means? A tickle. A, uh, a it makes you it makes you feel. Uh, you hear the words va'ata tetzava, and you start thinking about <clears throat> the last maimer the Rebbe gave out, and uh, all the lessons from the maimer va'ata tetzava. It's all about Raya Mehemda, the Moshe Rabbeinu, how he instills uh, Amuna. It's all about Moshe Rabbeinu, Moshe Rabbeinu, Moshe Rabbeinu, correct? And, uh, well, the truth is, you think about the story of uh, Purim, it's all about Ma the Moshe Rabbeinu. There's many things that are interesting that you could point out. <coughs> Haman has everybody bowing down to him, everybody, 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 and says that whenever he sees Mordechai, nah, he says, I, I have millions of people bowing down to me, as long as this Mordechai doesn't bow down to me, it's worthless. Who's the seichel? Who's the seichel? You know what that means in Yiddish? What's the logic? Yeah, one person ticks him off. From here, you. I once I read that a misnagdish Rosh Hashiva said, a chesidish of the hair. Even the Haman realized that the rest of the world is Eilam Goylam. They don't know what they're doing. Mordechai knows the truth. Mordechai, the, the, the Nasi Adar knows what's right and what's wrong. And if he doesn't bow down for me, Everybody, but what everybody else is doing doesn't mean anything. Eilam Gailam. I need the real deal. So, if, can you imagine? And then, of course, Zayin Adar, the fact that that's when he made the lottery. Because if Haman had a feeling, I shouldn't say a feeling, had an understanding what a Moshe Rabbeinu should be, is how about me and you? How about all of us? We should for sure have a, a, a Tropins. You know what a Tropins means? A drop. Drop. A drop. A little about Moshe Rabbeinu. Okay, let's get, let's get. Incidentally, because it's close to, uh, close to Purim. So this morning when I was in the mikvah, I saw. I don't know if you you, you go to that mikvah. You go to the purple double double decker bus, right? And you're gonna have a minion there. You're not gonna have a mikvah like we had. I had I had this morning. In the mikvah this morning, I, I'm guessing it's not of Adar. Adar. You know what they had in the mikvah? All around the bar, they had rubber duckies. <laughs> oh, really? It's a new, okay. I was thinking uh, uh, senior people are dunking in the mikvah and a bunch of rubber duckies all around the mikvah. I'm guessing it's to enhance the, the... So for you, because I know you're taking a long ride, I brought you some hamantashen. I thought you got me like a rubber ducky. <laughs> no, I couldn't steal. But hamantashen, here, this is my present to you. Wow. So this is amazing. the month of... So today's Parshish Kisisa, correct? What must come is on Parshish Kisisa and leave people with the food for thought to think and uh, answer two questions first of all what is one of the most important kalim the base of mikdash the mizbeach haktoris the mizbeach hazov why is it put by the end end of this week's parsha after every we got every first of all it's it's holier it's up up closer to the uh, to the kodesh Kedushim. we make a hush hush thing at the end of the parsha what happened why is the second doesn't bother you these things bother me <laughs> and then, then if you, then there's something in, we tried to find our chumash is in davening. There is something in davening that we say every single day from today's parsha, and it's it's split up between today's parsha and next week's parsha. When we speak about the mizbeach haktoris, 
So it says what what's done on it? The kataris. So it says they, uh, when you when you do the kataris, when the iron did the kataris, when the kain did the kataris. Okay. Next week's parsha is the whole kataris business. Exactly. We say it every day in davening, right? So I so we say it twice, once before shachris, once before mincha, because that's the time when they did the kataris, right? As you, if you ever translate those words, beitivayus and leiris, uvahalis arinus and leiris. About that time was the kataris. But I did realize that somebody asked a very good question. The one in Mefarshim and the Siddur. He says, "Okay, you do the tamid twice, once before shachris, once before mincha. You do the kataris once, be- but we smuggle in kataris another time. Mm-hmm. Where do we else? Where else in davening do we smuggle in the kataris? Ben- Benny." Oh, this is interactive with our like, Yeah, yeah, it's monologue. interactive. Inter- I mean, we have to charge you extra for this. Where, where else? <laughs> right before Aleinu. Right after Kaveh. Yes. How does that fall in there again? Pete and Lactitis Kate's on. And why don't you say Carbon Tumman again? Why do we say so many times the Kataris? Obviously, Kataris. And overdoing the Kataris or not doing it correctly is a very scary thing. So, you know, you know, the Rebbe have the minute to count the Kataris because to make because sure, even even maybe misnumbering it or misquoting it is, is a Chas Vashom. Uh, and here we say it twice. What's the point of saying Dictatus before Davani? And again, after, mm-hmm. uh, before Aleno. I'm going to leave that for all the Rabbanim and Dayanim. Oh, no. Leave a thing like this? But why is Dictatus connected to the Nadis? When Bahitibis and Nadis are in the morning, and Bahalis in the evening, and Bahalis. What's the connection between the two? Why don't you say you do it twice? Whatever you do, why are you connecting the two? So I saw a word from Rabbi Moshe Feinstein. Rabbi Moshe Feinstein, Zushi, this is for you, Rabbi Moshe. Uh, Rabbi Moshe says that the Koinim, their job was to teach Torah. Yerim Mishpatecha Liyakov, Yesimu Kutayra Ba'apecha, they're teaching Torah. Torah is symbolic with uh, the Menorah, the Menorah is shedding light. That's what their job is. That's where the Koinim uh, was to light the Menorah. But every Koin, besides spreading light, has to have another Chush, another talent. What's the other talent? Chush hareach. Chush hareach is a, the talent of scent, of smell. That when you when when you have to have, you have to smell and have a sense of what's right and what's wrong. When Mashiach comes, who is Mashiach? It also says Mashiach will be able to judge people by the sense of smell. In many places in your day, I find that the Shach writes Amishi Yeshle Reach Taira, the scent of Taira. You know. Shmeklish good me. You see, spasnish. What say spasnish? It could be the letter of the law is fine. So you could you could you could look at the Torah and what it says in the textbook. What it says in the Torah is fine. But this is shmeklish good, and this is what this, the Torah is telling you. Not only spread light, do it in a way that it's pleasant and it's, it's shmek good, and it's and, and, and it's a uh, you know some 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 good smell. You make a bracha. This is what the lesson is. Good for you. Let me make coffee. That's it. Give us a bracha, Zayin Adar, no something. Zayin Adar, Zayin Adar. Just again, Moshe Rabbeinu. We should have a little cash to Moshe Rabbeinu. Why a little bit? A big one. At least a little. <coughs> Thank cool. you very much, Rabbi cool. uh, Wilhelm. You show sure my name is Rabbi Wilhelm. I don't know. Show me your ID. <laughs>